welcomed the newly elected head of government of St. Kitts and Nevis, Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Terence Drew. Good evening, all. From where I stand, a sea of beautiful Caribbean people, I wish you had this vantage point as I do. It gives me great hope that our future as a civilization is, of course, cemented. It's a pleasure. Let me, of course, say from the onset that I recognize all the heads of governments who are here, but let me recognize our Secretary General and also our Prime Minister, Prime Minister of this beautiful country of Bahamas, Prime Minister Davis. And I see, of course, a lovely lady next to him. And if it is your wife, I want to recognize her as well. <laughs> Let me recognize also two special guests. The Prime Minister of Canada, Prime Minister Trudeau. And he apologized earlier for not bringing his wife. <laughs> and of course, President Orama from the African Export-Import Bank. I deem it an honor for me to deliver brief remarks at this, the 44th intersessional meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of the Caribbean community in this beautiful city of Nassau, in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. I would wish to place on record my appreciation to the government and people of the Bahamas for the excellent arrangements put in place for my delegation and all the other delegations at this meeting. And in the same vein, I would like to congratulate my colleague, the Honorable Philip Davis, on his resumption of the chairmanship of the conference and express my confidence in his stewardship in guiding the proceedings of this meeting and throughout the course of his tenure. I address you today in the context of my recent election to office following the general elections of August 6, 2022. I am conscious of the mantle of leadership and the strong mandate given to me by the citizens and residents of St. Kitts and Nevis and pledge to do my best to ensure that our decisions at this level redound to the benefit and by extension to the people of our Caribbean community. Chairman, our Caribbean community today stands at the crossroads where we must focus our attention on the myriad of challenges confronting us a small island developing states and low-lying coastal communities in an ever-increasing hostile global environment. Our challenges are well known to us. And I point out a few. Vulnerability to the external economic shocks, heavy dependence on a few, few products or services, frequent and more intense natural disasters, high cost associated with debt and climate change adaptation and mitigation, economic recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic, disruption in supply chains and steady increase in the cost of imports and production exacerbated by the ongoing war in Ukraine, and limited access to grants and concessional financing mechanisms to enable us to recover from external economic and environmental shocks. These overlapping challenges are cross-cutting in the effect. They impact all sectors of the economy, 
forcing us to play catch up as we advance our respective development agenda. CARICOM has remained an effective forum for its members to carve a space for the international community to seriously address the structural challenges we face as small states. We strongly believe that greater consideration should be given to the multidimensional vulnerability index as a more holistic metric for addressing the complex issues I highlighted earlier. It is more closely aligned to the ever-present danger we face on an annual basis, having to endure the ravages of natural disaster, including hurricanes, drought, volcanic eruptions, and rising sea levels. Assessing our high GDP does not adequately consider our vulnerability to economic and climate-related shocks. The analysis must involve a holistic approach to addressing vulnerability and provide solutions that are effective and sustainable. The time has come for the international financial institutions to take positive actions to address the realities we face and, en and enable us not only to recover from national disasters, but adapt to the existential threat of climate change by building stronger, more resilient communities to benefit the lives of our people. The St. Kitts and Nevis remains committed to the strengthening of the CARICOM single market and economy, CSME, which, regard, which we regard as training ground for engaging with the wider global economy. We believe in the free movement of skills, services and goods, capital and other key elements of the CSME. We view the region as a single space for the people of our region to live, engage in robust economic activity, and advance the economic and social prospects of our region. It is difficult for us to extol the virtues of the CSME without addressing the proverbial elephant in the room, intra-regional transport. The reality is that it is too difficult and too costly for the people of the region to move and exercise their rights within the single space created for them to do so at optimal levels. For example, coming to this meeting in Bahamas is a classic case in point. Many of us have to fly to Miami overnight there before taking a flight the following day to our destination here in Nassau, Bahamas. It takes no less than 24 hours to move from country to country within our region at times. Compared to other nation developed countries with highly developed transport means and modalities, we in the Caribbean remain at a disadvantage in realizing the benefits of the CSME that the framers of the CARICOM Treaty envisaged. Moving from New York, for example, to Washington DC takes a mere four hours by car and less than two hours by aircraft. The contrast is a stark reality of the challenge we face on an ongoing basis here in the Caribbean. Further, Chapter 6 of the revised Treaty of Chagaramas provides the framework for inter alia, a the organization of efficient, reliable, affordable transport services throughout the community, and the promotion of cooperative arrangements provision of transport services. We recognize that several bodies of work have been invested in this regard. The Caribbean Development Bank and other key players continue to seek a sustainable solution to fix the gaps that exist and breathe life into Chapter 6 of the revised Treaty of Chagaramas. From our vantage point of view, the government of Sakits and Nevis has explored several options in collaboration with a few partners to make it easier for people to move to and from our jurisdiction to engage in business or leisurely activities. We encourage other member states to do likewise. We can do it together. We cannot rest on our laurels while the efficiency gap ex gets wider, causing us to fall behind in achieving our development objectives. And as we approach the celebration 
of our golden anniversary of our beloved Caribbean community, I urge us to redouble our efforts to improve the effectiveness of and efficiency of organs of our institution. Let us strengthen the pillars of functional cooperation. The theme selected, 50 years strong, a solid foundation to build on, is quite fitting as it encourages us to consider our rich legacy and build a stronger, more prosperous future. St. Kitts and Nevis remains committed to strengthening regional integration in the upcoming year and beyond. Thank you very much. <laughs>